Welcome to the Sunday podcast of the Prodigal Son. You know, I do these podcasts on Sundays to give you something to feed on. You know, a lot of people don't get to go to church. A lot of churches are closed down. But I want to give you something that you can be strong in, and that is God's Word. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. I want to I want to talk to you about something that... uh is real dear to my heart, but first I want to pray. I want to uh, ask the Holy Spirit to guide and direct in what I say and do, and to feed you with this, this book. Not man's traditions, not what I think, but what thus saith the Lord. Father, we praise you and we thank you, God, for the time that you've given us. Lord, I pray that you'd guide and direct in this service. Lord, I pray that you'd touch each and every heart that's represented here today, each and every family, Lord, that they would come to find and know your will through your word, through the through the truth in your word. Guide and direct me today. Touch my mind, touch my mouth, and speak through me. Be the light that I'm supposed to be for you. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Turn to uh, Isaiah 54 and 17. If there's ever a time that we need to know who's on our side, it's right now. One of our friends called Missy and or texted her and something. She, she made the statement, people are dropping like flies over this pandemic that we're in the middle of. This is something that years ago, I want to read this scripture. I want to tell you a story about a man that that I I know personally. He's a he's a very good fella. I help him at the jail, helped him for years now. Let me read this scripture and I'm I wanna I wanna uh talk about it. It's uh, Isaiah fifty four seventeen. It says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Alan Crider's wife called me over three years ago now, and she said, Can you help us at the jail? We need some help. Alan had had two strokes and the doctor said, if he had, after the first one, he said, if he has a second stroke, it's going to kill him. He'll, he'll never make it through. Well, today he's preaching and, and going about his business the way he should. He's, it's been a long road for him, but he's a man of faith. He's not a man that, that will doubt what this word says. But we sat down. I'd never laid eyes on him, never met him, talked to his wife. He don't like to talk on the phone that much. And, and uh, we sat down over at the jail in the visitation uh, place, and he said, I just want to talk to you a minute before we go in. He said, I want to tell you something. He said, I don't want to sow any fear in you. And I may have told this last time I was here, but he said, I don't, I don't want to sow any fear into you. He said, I don't want you to be fearful one bit when we go through these doors. But he said, do me a favor. I said, what's that? He said, pay attention. Pay attention to what's going on around you. I've seen some things in that jail. <laughs> it, it's, it's amazing what people live through inside those block walls over there. But he said, I'm not trying to sow fear in you. He said, but pay attention and watch what you're doing because there's some bad people in this jail. And immediately, I'm not talking about in a few minutes, but immediately it came up in me. No weapon formed against thee will prosper. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Those two scriptures rung out in my heart, not in my head, but right here. And, and that was the first time that I realized that I believed what that book said. That I had come to a place in my life that that meant more than anything else that I've seen or heard because Alan wasn't doing it on purpose. He said, I just want you to be, he said, I just want you to have a little, you know, a little reverence to what's going on in here because there's some bad people in here. They, they are. There's some federal prisoners all through that jail. 
some of the best people that you'll ever come in contact with that are in there looking at life sentences. But when I, when those scriptures come up in me, the Holy Spirit had something to work with because it was here. It wasn't here. But it was it was embedded in here because not not anything that I've done, but I have determined in my heart that I'm going to put that word above the opinion of anyone. And and I don't walk through life scared. I'm not going to do it. I refuse to do it because I know who is making the way for me. And I know who's watching my back while I'm going. Isaiah 52, 12 says it. The God of Israel, let's just back up over there and look at it. Isaiah 52, 12 says, For ye shall not go out with haste, nor by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will Will be, will be your rear reward. Or in other words, your rear guard. In other words, He's going to open a way up for us to walk in. He's going to make the way. And then He's going to watch my back while I'm walking in it. I'm not, I, I left here March of last year on the very weekend that they shut this country down. I could have got, I, I live in, in Georgetown, Tennessee. I got on the, on the highway at exit 33 on 75. I could have literally put my cruise control on 100 miles an hour and never touched the brake because they wasn't a soul on the road and drove to Akron, Ohio if I didn't have to stop and get gas. That's where I was going. And when I left there, I text my pastor and I asked him, I said, will you agree with me? That though a thousand fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, it will not come near me. And he said, I agree with you. And I ain't thought another thing about it. I've not, I've not thought one thing about it. We were in nine different states last year. Me and Missy and Kelsey got on a plane and went to Yellowstone, flew all over, people running everywhere in, in a panic over what's going on. In a panic, but greater is he that is in me that dwells here Amen. than he that's in this world and all the things that are wrapped up in it. Amen. You get wound up in people's opinion, honey, you in trouble. In this day and time, I see people, I mean, I'm talking about strong people just in a in a in a, a daze Amen. over what's going on. Right. That, that lady called me and she said the people are dropping like flies. But she said she, she don't want to take this, this vaccine. I ain't taking it. Sorry. It ain't happening. Right. It, I, I ain't going to take it. Don't need it. Because the very one that died on the cross for me took stripes yeah. for my healing. Yes, sir. He took stripes for my healing, and I'm going to believe that book Me too. over any man that's wearing a white coat. Amen. Bless him, Lord. What I want to instill in you today and urge you, if there's ever a time in, in the world that we live in today, in, in history, in world history, if there's ever a time that you need to find faith in God, it's today. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Because faith in God is the only thing that's going to carry you through. Amen. Not faith in your in your church attendance, right. even though that's great if you're here every time the doors are open. But I'm going to tell you, faith in God is Amen. the only thing that's going to carry this nation that we live in through. And if we don't come to a place in our Christian life that we're going to stand on God's Word above anything, above any opinion, what you see. I mean, I, I, I don't even, we don't even watch TV like that. I don't watch the news. I make it a purpose not to watch the news. In 2013, I sat 
and watched Fox News till I was just like, just, what, what's it, what are we going to do? And now it's almost eight years later, and what are we seeing? It's ten times worse. Yes, sir. hundred times worse. I never thought in the, in the early 90s, when I was a young man and started voting, I never thought in a million years this country could be any worse than it was then. Why well, they teddy bears back in compared to what they are today? Yep. Nothing compares. But what I want you to understand is that no matter what you're doing in this world, I don't care how much money you got, I don't care how much prestige you got. I don't care how many people you know. When the rubber meets the road, you better have faith in this book, in what God says, because I've seen people with the vaccine kill over and die. A good friend of mine didn't have COVID, but died right up here on Okoy Street. It bothers me to see the people that we live around and have known for years and years and years in just in a sheer panic in what they're doing. People that you thought in a million years would be strong through anything have just come apart at the seams and gave in to the fear. You know what fear is? Fear is, is faith in the devil being able to hurt you more than God's able to keep you up and watch after you. That's all it is. Fear tolerated. Now this, get this. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. You say, I don't know what to do. I do. Take this book right here and consume it. You can ask my wife, I don't move. I don't move until I get up and I, I'll take an hour, hour and a half, two hours. I don't do nothing in the morning before I find myself waking up at 2.30 and 3.30 and 4.30 and 5.30. That's the first thing I do. I've wore out two iPads. I don't use this Bible. This Bible's 10 years old and I don't use it that much. I, I, I wear an iPad out. But I don't move until I put that truth in me because I know when you walk out that door out there, there's been some, going to be some yahoo out there that's going to tell you a hundred different reasons why that you got to see something messed up today. I, I don't live like that. Hadn't lived like that for a lot of years. And that trip to the jail... Alan Crider is one of the best men that's ever walked the planet, in my opinion. Good fella. But he said, I want you to know. And, and, and I think about a lot of times, and I'd have never got what I got today unless he had said what he said. And he just wanted me to pay attention. He said, you know, pay attention. Don't be goofing off in here. Don't be, you know, not paying attention to what's going on because there's liable to be a fight break out. And they hurt you. I'd go in there and lay down on the floor and sleep. Don't bother me a bit. I go in there by myself. Most time everybody groups up and they go in and you know they're doing this as they go through. I go in there by I've, I've yet to go in with anyone. I go in by myself. I've got my own pods and it's volunteer pods. It's not they they ain't made to do this. They they're not made to do it. When I first went in they had a, a faith pod. They don't have it anymore. So if I'm going to get somebody to sit down with me, they got to volunteer. In other words, they've got to come over to the, to the table and sit down and study. That's what we do in there. But if I had fear in me, it wouldn't happen. I'd have quit a long time ago. Because you go in there and look at some of them, you think, my goodness, where you been? You know, what, what happened? And it ain't that they're bad people. They just don't, they've, they've never known who they can be in Jesus Christ. There's a man over there right now, I think the world of him. His name is Victor Thomas. You may know him. He's been around Cleveland all of his life. 
He was a pastor out here somewhere at a church, assistant pastor. He's looking at two life sentences. He said, I just, he just, he said, I just signed a, a, a deal for 17 years. And then he said, I've got two more deals working. One of them's for 14 ounces of meth and a gun. That's a life. That's life. And the other one's for uh, 17, 18 ounces of meth and a gun. And he said, he's sitting in there. He's 66 years old. And looking at life. He don't never see the light of day as a free man anymore. But he just grins when I come in the door. I love him. I mean, he just, he, they call him cowboy. And I go in and he just hugs my neck and says, I'm glad to see you. And he, he was sitting there one day. He said, I get mad at myself sometimes. You know, pastor. Work in a church. He said, I get mad at myself sometimes. He said, I got mad the other day and slung my Bible across the cell. He said, I wasn't mad at God. He said, I was mad at myself. He said, this is as simple as falling out of a tree. Just simple. And he said, I missed it. There's millions that miss it. Yep. Listen, yeah. they, they're, they're so wound up in what we think and what we believe Instead of believing what this says. Amen. What this says is the truth. Amen. Come hell or high water, this is the truth. Amen. And I'm going to stand on what this says if they burn the place down. You understand? Because I promise you, a thousand years from now, <laughs> that's the only thing that's going to matter. Really? Think about it. A thousand years from now, we're all going to be gone. And this truth still be standing, and it's the only, whether what you've done with it is the only thing that will matter. I told people for years when Donald Trump was the president, you may like him, you may not, I don't really don't care. But when Donald Trump was the president, I say, listen, you make money like Donald Trump, live to be a thousand years old if it was humanly possible. I said, but you die without a relationship with God, you have sold out cheap. You die without a relationship with God, you have come to a place that ignorance has overcome your good sense. Because that is the only thing in this world. I wish I, I wished a thousand times over, and, and my wife tells me, and there's been other people tell me, don't regret the years that you spent out in the world. Don't regret it. There's no regret in me. Because I can take what I've done then and apply it now and deal with people that you, you, you'll never be able to get to. Guarantee it. I can sit down with people that you can never relate to. But I can relate to them all day long. But I, I look back at all those years as a young man. If I'd had the knowledge and the understanding of this book when I was in my early 20s, when I got born again, I'd been dangerous as a cock gun. I'm telling you the devil would have rattled in his shoes when I got out of the bed because I'd never, I'd never gave in to the fear that consumed me. It did. I got born again in the old building at Samples Memorial Baptist Church before Lee Ingram was the pastor at a funeral. And by the time I got out the door... The devil had me defeated. I knew that God had saved me. But that constant pounding. You know what Diablo means? You know what the Greek definition of Diablo? Diablo is, is the, the Spanish word for devil. But it means to pound constant. Over and over and over again. Ain't that what the devil does? It's just a constant pounding, pushing, uh, what would you call it, uh, pressure, anxiety. 
And before I got out the back door at Calvin Boyd's funeral, that's who it was, the devil had me defeated. He said, you can't do this. There ain't no way you could do this. And I should have agreed with him. That's the only thing I ever thought I can ever think of in my lifetime that I should agree with, do it with the devil on it. No, I couldn't do it on my own. Nope. Yeah. Bless him, but I can do all things through Christ yeah, yeah, that strengthens yeah. me. In Him, there's nothing in this world that I can't overcome. Amen. And in Him, there is nothing in this world that you can't overcome. Amen. But you've got to put enough of this book in you for the Holy Spirit to use. Because when we're born again, the Holy Spirit comes and takes up His abode in us. Yeah, he, he's right here. And all we have to do is allow Him to lead us. Yeah. I, told, I tell a story on my podcast a lot. It's about my daddy's dog. He's got a German Shepherd. She's a good dog. If, you, if you've never dealt with a German Shepherd, they're different from all other dogs. They want to lead you everywhere they go. I have to stop the tractor sometime to keep from running over. She'll, she'll run right out in front of me and look back over her shoulder. Like, come on, I'm going to lead you. And the Lord spoke to me sitting on that tractor one day. He said, that's what I have tried my best to do with you. You know, I got old blue lacy hound that she'll bite you and poke you and push you and prod you. That's the devil. You know, he pushes and, pr and just drives and puts you in a place that'll just, you know, make you want to scream. God ain't like that. God's that still, small voice that says, if you'll shut up. As a preacher went into his uh, study and fell down on the floor and screamed and yelled and cried and slung snot for 30 minutes. Then he said he came to himself. Rolled over and said, here lies a fool that ain't got enough sense to shut his mouth and listen to the one that's got all the answers. Amen. My God, people, when are we going to decide to hush? I've, I'm a lot quieter as an as a, as a older man than I ever was as a young man. I'd rather cut up and, and stir something up than eat. I mean, <laughs> he knows it. And I had. I mean, I, I love to cut up and have a good time. But I have come to a place in my life that I, if I can't say something that's going to make me stronger, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Because I was the world's worst about, well, this and this and this, and I ain't even going to get into it because before you know it, you're cutting up, you're playing. Well, that don't mean anything. It means a whole lot. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing that Word. I want to encourage you to do something. If I've said anything today, you can ask my wife. I lay in the bed with headphones in my ears. I don't read the Word. Faith don't come by reading. It don't. Show me in the book where it does, and I'll eat the page. Faith don't come by reading. It comes by hearing the Word. And if I'm not reciting the Word and speaking what I want to put here so I can use, I'm listening to it with headphones in my ears. And constantly, faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And if you will do this, stop reading and start looking at it and reading it out loud to yourself. Because I promise you, if, there, if I've said anything that's the truth tonight, your opinion, this is the truth, your opinion means more to you than anybody else's in this world. Correct? Hold your hands up. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Your opinion means more to you than anybody else's in the world. So if you're reading God's truths and you're hearing those truths, 
What are, you, what are you doing? You're building faith in that because it's coming out of your mouth and going into your ears. That's the reason I do a podcast. I want people to be able to listen at a 20, 25 minute deal, get something, and then chew on it all day. Chew on it. And then get in that, get in that same scripture and, and just consume it and take it as your own because this is God speaking to us. And when he said in Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against me will prosper, guess what? I'm going to take it as the truth. And I'm going to take it as it's mine. It's him speaking to me. And when he speaks it to me, he'll speak it to you just the same because he's no respecter of person. He don't think any more of me than he does it to you, even though that you may not do what I do. It doesn't matter. There's God told me something years ago now that really gave me an insight on how much He loves every living person on this world, no matter what they've done. I was I was just out messing around, and you'll find me. I'll make it a, a make an excuse to go mow. My wife looks at that field, and she's like, "That field don't need mow." I said, "Do." And I do it for a reason. I do it so I can be fed and be strengthened. But he told me one time, he said, Son, he said, I love the abortion doctor as much as I love the babies they're killing. Now, can you get hold of that? Yeah. That's deeper than I can reach. God loves the abortion doctor, a serial murderer that kills innocent children for a living, He loves them as much as He loves the babies that they're snipping up and throwing in the trash. I said it for years that He loves Osama bin Laden and Adolf Hitler and Saddam Hussein just as much as He loves everybody else. And I'm not going to back up on it because He does. I pray that they opened their eyes up before they died because God loved them. But when we come to a place that we take this book as our own, not that this this uh, this Isaiah fifty four seventeen is written to David or Lee or Tracy or anybody else, but you take it that it's written for you because God loves you. As much as he does me, he loves you as much as he does that child that's as innocent as there is innocent. You understand? And when we can come to understand that and realize that, we can come to understand and realize that what he has written down in here for us to take as our own, he means it. So many times doubt and And fear, doubt and fear is going to mix up and make unbelief every time. And the only thing that's ever going to matter in your life is what you do with what God's Word says. And I hope I've got what I... I don't think I do. Hang on just a second. I've got a picture in here somewhere. I know I do. I seen this on Facebook. Can you read that? When we see Satan, we will say, is this the one that was trying to destroy me? That little rat. Honey, if you believe in what Satan says, you believe in a liar. Yeah. The, only, the only weapon that Satan has for us is deception. And you have, to, you have to listen to and believe a lie and be deceived to believe that what you are reading in this book doesn't apply to you because he's written it for every one of us. And that little rat 
that that man's got by the nap of the neck is really who he is. He's been defeated. Yeah. He's already been defeated. Amen. I'd fight Mike Tyson after Holyfield got, wearing, got done wearing his head out. Now, can we not stand up in the authority that God has given us in His Word and stand against this God-forsaken mess that we're in right now? And stand against it and say, no way, shape, nor form. Jesus Christ took stripes on Calvary's cross for what I am going to accept for me as my healing. Because you, you, if, you're, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, by faith, we, we accept Jesus Christ as, by our, as our Lord and Savior. We confess Him as Lord. We believe that. That's by faith. Can you not accept Him as your healer the same way? Amen. Can you not? I mean, can you not accept Jesus Christ and speak it with your mouth, confess it with your mouth, and believe it in your heart that Jesus took stripes on Calvary's cross for our sins? You want me to give you some book on that? I'm going to give you some book on it because I want you to understand what we're dealing with. Look at Isaiah 53.4. This Bible's got tabs, and I have yet to get used to them. Isaiah 53, 4. It says, Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We did esteem Him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Now, go to Matthew eight seventeen. I'm going to give you a New Testament translation of Isaiah 53.4. Now, I didn't write this, okay? This is Jesus speaking. It says, Matthew 8.17 it says, That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, or Isaiah, the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities, and bear our sicknesses. That is a New Testament translation of Isaiah 53, 4. So I'm, I'm not done. Go to 1 Peter 2.24. It says, who, him, who, who His own self bear our sins in His own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. What is that? What is, what's He talking about there? He's talking about Jesus bearing our sins on the cross for our salvation, right? Amen. So if He bore our sins on the cross and we can be saved by faith in Him and what He done, can we not take Matthew eight seventeen? And the last part of 1 Peter 2.24 is where it says, By His stripes you were healed. What does that mean? That's past tense. Said He took stripes on Calvary's cross 2,000 years ago for our healing. And Matthew 8.17 is a translation of Isaiah 53.4. that says He bore our sicknesses and carried our, our, our diseases. Well, ain't that what 1 Peter 2.24 says about our sins? If He can do it with our sins, why can't He do it with our, or with our ailments? Why can't He do it with this COVID? Right. He can. Yes. He can. But there's millions that don't know that they can believe Matthew, or 1 Peter 2.24 like they can believe Romans 10.9 and 10. Romans 10, 9 and 10 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We'll turn that right around and, and put healing in that. It said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth 
the Lord Jesus Christ as your healer and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, what? That the, he took stripes on Calvary's cross, what? He will be your healer. You can take it as the same thing. It is the same thing. By faith and confession with it. You want some book on it? Mark 11, 22. And after this, I'm going to get done. I'm getting hot. Go to slow down. Every time I come out of here, I'm ringing wet. Mark eleven twenty two. Now, this is Jesus talking. I won't let you get there because I want you to I want you to hear what Jesus is saying. Now this is written in red, right? This ain't Stacy's opinion. This is not Stacy's opinion. This is Jesus' opinion. This is God's word. It says, and Jesus answering unto them. Well, I'm gonna give you a little backlog of what this is talking about. Jesus, the day before, had just spoke to the to the fig tree and told it to dry up from the roots. He said, you'll not bear fruit. And the next day it was dead. And they all looked at it and marveled and said, what is this? Jesus said, now this, this is what Jesus said. He says, have faith in God. Verily, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, what is the mountain we've been talking about? It's this wretched mess that we've been dealing with for years. And if the, or not years, but months now, all going on two years. And if the churches and the people in the church, the Christian people in the world that we live in, will take authority over this devil, it's got to go. Because Jesus said it right here in this book. It says, that For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, that mountain is your problems. Right. Said, say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you saith shall come to pass. It shall, you shall have whatsoever you say. That's when I determined that my big mouth needed to say shut a lot of times. Because if I wasn't speaking to my problems, I was adding to them. Jesus didn't, bear, didn't uh, uh, mention that when you believe something in your heart and you confess it with your mouth, it'll happen on the negative side. He's talking about moving mountains and, and your problems. He didn't bother to, to say, look, if, if you've got doubt and fear and, 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 and you're believing it here when it comes out your mouth, guess what? It's going to come to pass. I've seen it happen over and over and over again. People say, talk, start talking about something. And before you know it, it has transpired right before them. So, and they'll stand, they're proud of it. See, I told you, look there. I don't want to do that. Because if i got a bunch of doubt and fear and unbelief in my life, I sure don't want it coming out of my mouth and, and transpiring right in front of me. But that's, I've seen it over and over. So when we come to a place to get back where I was at, when we come to a place that you can read Isaiah 54, 17, and you walk out into this world, and with all the authority that God has, not you, 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 you think, are you crazy? You're going to stand up there and, and act like that you're that strong? No, I ain't that stupid. But in Him, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And you've got to understand something. If you're born again today, you are residing in Him. You have been put in a place of, of good night. Uh, authority. I bought a t-shirt in Key West, out, Key West, Florida in one of the darkest times in my life. It says a good, a good judge or a good attorney, good lawyer knows the law. But a great, a great, great lawyer knows the judge. 
And I bought that in a bad time. But I look at that t-shirt sometimes and I've got a picture of it. I look at that t-shirt sometimes and I wear it out in public because there are people just grin at you like, yeah, I know what you're talking about there. And then they come up and say, I like that shirt. Well, let me tell you about my, my lawyer. Because the lawyer that, that I have now, my advocate, is the son of the judge. And the judge just happens to be my father. And I'm heir to everything he's got and joint heir with my attorney. Do you understand where I'm getting at? Yeah. This is book. Hey. And when you, can, when you can come to the conclusion that I'm going to take this book and, and, and shove it down the devil's throat every time he opens his mouth, because Alan Crowder didn't mean to put fear in me, but the Holy Spirit brought up in me, greater is He that is in me. Makes me want to run around this house when I think about what God has done and looking back over the life that I led and think, son, I got you. I know where you're going. I know what you're going to do. And this is the only man that ever told me that. He said, he stood right up there in the funeral home one time. He said, I know you're going to come back. He said, you're going to come back? Fine. He did. Stood right there and told me. And I'm thinking, Lord, you know more than I do. Because I sure don't want to. I had reserved myself to stay just exactly where I was at because I hadn't, I hadn't come to the realization that I could count on what this said. I hadn't come to the understanding. I told my pastor here a while back, I said, if I hadn't have come over here and got in this book, and come to the conclusion that this word was true above all opinion, I'd have been backslid today because all I ever seen was struggle, hurt, fear, doubt. Well, we don't believe it that way. I don't care what you believe. God don't care what we believe. You know what He cares about? What He's wrote down. And if you, if, you have, if you don't have the ability to believe what God said, that don't make it void. That don't void it out. Just because we decide that it don't fit in our little mold does not mean that, well, you're going to have to back up and punt, honey, because uh, I ain't going for that. No. God's going to say, I have said it. What did He say? I am the Lord. I change not. If there's any changing going on, it's us. If, we, if, if I decide that I want to be drunk before dark, I guarantee you I can get her done. <laughs> Promise you. Ain't doubt my mind. But I'm going to tell you something. Two against one wins every time. And in closing, I want to talk to you about something that will... Completely change your life. I told you. Read your word out loud. So you can hear it, right? Romans 12 and 2 says to renew your mind. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. When you're born again, that inner man is saved. It's just to say it just to save today as it was whenever you got born again. Hadn't changed none. And if you'll renew your mind. To what this says, you can control this mess all day long. You follow me? Yeah. It's two against one. Ge what, what Genesis 1.26 said, let us make man in our image. We're foolish enough to think it's just what we see. No. We're a spirit man, lives in a body that has a, an operating system that we call a soul. It's our, our mind, our will, and emotions. And if you renew your mind to what this says about you, instead of what uh, Dr. Fauci says, you can stand up and say, no. I'm going to say that as politely as I can and as politically as correct as I can. No. I'm not going to allow the fear that you're trying to sow into me get me. Because I promise you, you watch enough CNN and Fox News... <laughs> I seen something on Facebook a while ago. 
He said the, the American public thinks that the, the hand in 2021, the hands are the most washed things in the, in the uh, human anatomy. He said, I beg to differ with you. It's the brain. We've been brainwashed yeah. into believing that what we see and hear and feel in this flesh overrules what this book says. Look here, honey. If there's anything that I'm going to do today, I'm going to believe what God said. Whether you do or not, it's up to you. It's your prerogative. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt that what He will do for me, what He has done for me, He will do for every person that walks the face of this planet. Amen. Every one of them. I don't care what they've done. God will do for, for them just as much as He's done for me and you if you're born again. But we have to, we have to take this book and use it for what it's used for. When, when Satan came to Jesus, when he was, the, the Bible says that he was, he was tempted for 40 days. When he came to Jesus, what did Jesus do? He didn't cuss and spit and throw rocks and scream and yell. What did he do? He gave him the word. And at the end, what did Satan do? He left. He didn't have to get mad. Didn't have to get upset. Didn't have to get his blood pressure all wound up. He just gave him the Word. I've been giving that sorry joker the Word for years now. And, and I'm going to continue to give him the Word. Because the Word is the only thing that I've got that works. Amen. I can work out and do all these things, run up and down the road and eat right. I promise you, devil will beat you to death. Outside of Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Outside of this Word. But I don't care how little you are, how big you are, how out of shape you are. You can take that Word and stomp that little rat every time he sticks his head up in your life. You don't have to scream and get upset to get it done. Just use that book. Use that book and find out who you are. I've got a list of 150 some odd scriptures that tells us who we are in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, or who you can become in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And when you determine in your life and in your heart that you're going to believe what this book says over and above, what the world thinks or says about you or what you say. I used to say and look, at the, look in the mirror and say, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Wasn't nothing wrong with me. I was just human. That's just it. And my flesh took precedence over my born-again spirit, my mind agreed with it. That's just it. But when I come to understand that God was for me, He wasn't some old bipolar old man sitting on His throne with a hammer in one hand and a lightning bolt in the other waiting for me to screw up. Because if He was, I'd been dead years ago. Yep. Gone. All of us would have screwed up one too many times and He had said, Bless him, Lord. And sent us home. But, he, but, he, but He's not. He's that loving Father. Mm -hmm. And the prodigal son, that's the name of my podcast, the prodigal son. He's that loving Father that was looking at the horizon, watching for His boy to come home. Whether you're born again or whether you're not, it's the same thing. God's been over waiting on you as a little kid, like that little, little girl right there. He looks at us as His children, not as middle-aged men or women or, or, or teenagers. He looks at us as kids because that's what we are. Mentally, physically, the whole nine yards, we're, he, we're God's children. And when we can come to understand that and come to understand that He wants to love us. He wants to get down in the floor with us and play with us and love on us and show us that He's for us. He's not looking down His nose at you trying to shame you. 
He's not looking down his nose at you in disgust. I thought that was him. Because there was so many people out here in this world that looked at me that way. Well, bless their hearts. Look out. You know why? Because I know the truth. And man's opinion don't matter. You understand that? Man's opinion don't matter. It don't matter about anything. Because I promise you, man's opinion will be dead and gone. And this book right here will be standing. And, and like I said, a thousand years from now, what you've done with Jesus Christ and what He said is the only thing that will matter. Yes, sir. That's, the, that's it. That's the only thing that will matter. Now, as they get a song, I don't know what y'all... Uh, I think I do too know what y'all do. We're going to give somebody an invitation. What they want to do is, is their business. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not one to drag something out. I want to give you an opportunity to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. If you've never been born again, or if you're away from God, give it back to Him. You don't have to come down here at this bench to do it. You can do it sitting right there. You can do it right out there in the ditch. It don't matter. And I want you to understand something, that God is not mad at you. There's not one mad bone in His body at you. He's got love for you that you'll never find in this world. Never. I don't care who it is that says they love you. I can't love my kids more than God loves my kids. I can't love my wife more than, than, than God loves my wife. I love them with all my heart, but I cannot touch the surface of what God loves each and every person, including everyone over in that jail. You go right across this hill right here and, and can run into the, some of the, the most downtrodden, beaten down people that you'll ever come in contact with. Right over there in the east side of Cleveland, that you'll you'll ever understand. You'll you'll never I've been going over there for years. Little girls in their twenties running around in, in twenty degree weather with nothing but a pair of t shirt a t shirt and a pair of shorts on because they're so cranked up on meth. Don't know where it ends up. Just come out to get something to eat. It's sad what this world has become. Yeah. But God loves those people just like He does us. And I don't care what you've done, where you've been, or how many times you screwed it up. God will meet you. He'll be more to you than, than your parents could ever be, than your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, your mom or your dad. It don't matter. God wants to be to you what this world can't be. And that's a crutch and a help and a guide. And, and, and someone that you can run to in the darkest... I'm going to tell this and then I'm going to quit. I promise you. I came unglued years ago and I called Beecher White. I called everybody in the country. Tried to get somebody out of the bed. It's 1.30, 2 in the clock in the morning. Me and her both just sideways. And the only one that answered was Beecher. He drove all the way from Polk County, come to my house, sat with us, talked to us, loved us, went back home. Today, I wouldn't have bothered him. You know why? Because God's right here. He's right here. He's as close to you today as He'll ever be or ever has been. All you got to do is ask. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. That is the truth. Regardless of how you feel. Regardless of the lies of the devil. Says, yeah, that's for everybody in this place but you. You're the only one that screwed up the way you've screwed up. And, 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 and you'll never put yourself in a place that God's going to ever love you. That's a lie. God loves us. No weapon formed against you will prosper if you'll believe it. 
and take it and tuck that ball up under your arm and run over the devil with it. Step out today. Let God do what He wants to do in your life. And I promise you, you'll never go wrong. I don't, I don't regret any minute that I have given myself to this book because I'm stronger today at 52 years old than I've ever been in my life. Not because of something I've done, but what He wrote down for me to stand in. You, stay, you ever seen a little kid stand up and their daddy stand behind him and they think, boy, look out, here I am? I have. You look at me sometimes and think, boy, you've lost your mind, huh-uh. I lost my carnal mind a long time ago because my Heavenly Father said that He's for me. He's not against me. He loves me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Greater is His Spirit that lives in me than in, in this world that we live in. Today, make up your mind that you're going to take that same attitude with everything that goes on in your life. Walk through life knowing who you are in Jesus Christ and let Him do a work in you that man can't do. Go ahead and sing, bro. Glory to God. I thank you for tuning into this podcast. If if you've never if you've never contacted us, go to our website, get in touch with us. It's the dash prodigalson.com. If you've never been born again, I want to invite you to be born again today. Confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Get in contact with us. We want to help you to be born into the family of God. If you're if you've got a prayer request, send me your prayer request. I want to send you scripture that you and I both can stand on and agree on that God's got the answer to your prayer. Now, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you for all that you do, sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give His Word away free of charge to anybody that'll listen. Oh, I thank God for people that are, are faithfully sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has told us to do. Give us marching orders to do. Thank you, partners. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, whether you're a partner or whether you're not, sow these, share these podcasts into your, in, into your social media. Sow them into the world so others can be set free through the truths in God's Word. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do so into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.